today I want to share with you the seven best kitchen tools for the modern Pioneer Kitchen. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. The first thing I want to mention is that at any time you want to jump ahead, be sure to check the description underneath this video or the pinned comment where I'll list timestamps for everything I'm going to cover. Plus, I want you to know that over on my website, Mary's Nest, same name as my YouTube channel, I'll have a blog post that'll correspond with this video where I'll go into a lot more detail about the items I'm going to talk about. And keep in mind, this is not a sponsored post. These are all items that I've purchased myself and that I use almost every day. Well, item number one that I want to talk about is a grain mill. Now, this is an electric grain mill and it's one that I love. But yes, you can also have a manual grain mill, which I had for many years. But this is so affordable, it's made by Mock Mill, and I have a coupon code for you. So be sure to check the description underneath this video where I'll have a link and you can learn more about that. So many of us who are modern pioneers in the kitchen really like storing grain because grain can be stored for a really long time. I'm talking about whole grain. But if you store whole grain, you need a way to turn it into flour when you want to make bread. Definitely having a manual grain grinder as a backup in the event that you don't have power is wonderful. And there are a number of options available on the market. But as long as we do have electricity, I can't say enough good things about the mock mill. I love this. The whole housing is made from recycled materials, which helps keep the cost down. But it is a stone ground mill or stone grinding mill. <laughs> Not sure exactly what the right uh, terminology is, but it, it does grind the grain with stones so that it's very protective of the oils in the grain. And once you start making bread with freshly ground grain and you have that fresh milled flour, you are going to love the outcome. Your bread is going to taste fresher. You're going to get a better rise. Everything about it is going to be wonderful, especially if you like making sourdough. And if you've ever wondered if you can grind your grain, have your whole grain flour, but then turn it into something as close as possible to all purpose flour, you can do that too. You just need a sifter. These are very affordable. You can even see mine's a little bent. It's well used and well loved. And you just sift out the bran and the germ. Then you have something that's very close to all purpose flour. And then all you need to do is store it. This is a nice airtight container that I keep mine in and I have it ready to use every day. And my grain, my whole grain, I store in five gallon buckets. And if you've seen my video where I go into a lot of detail about how to store food, especially whole grain, to keep it as fresh as long as possible, I'll be sure to link to that in the iCards and in the description below in case you did miss it. Number two, is fermentation equipment. Because as modern pioneers in the kitchen, we love making traditional foods, including not only sourdough, but also ferments. Making ferments is very easy, and I have a very detailed playlist, which I'll be sure to link to in the iCards and in the description below, so that you can learn if you're new to it. Now, there are a lot of varieties of fermentation equipment out there, but my favorite one is the Mason Tops fermentation kit. And I've also got a coupon code for you, so be sure to check that description underneath this video. What I love about their kit is that it comes in a box that is fantastic for storing everything once you've washed it and dried it. Now you do need to supply your own jar, which if you're a home canner, that's usually something you have on hand, and you'll need a canning ring. And what the Mason Tops kit comes with is what I call the Kraut Pounder, you often use when making sauerkraut, but it works great for pounding down any vegetables because that's the whole point of fermentation. You want to compress it as tightly as possible and keep everything under the brine. And to help with the process of keeping everything under the brine, you've also got these little glass, I believe they call them pickle pebbles. Now, if you are a home canner, yes, I do like mason tops, but I have to tell you that I often use a four ounce jelly jar also, and I'll just put that right into my jar. So if you don't have the pickle pebbles, the four ounce jelly jar works great too to hold everything under the brine. 
Then once you get everything submerged under your brine, weighted down with your pickle pipe or your, your uh, little jelly jar, because all of these things are sold individually, so you don't need to buy everything together if you don't want to use the pickle pebbles and you just want to use the jelly jar. Uh, then all you do is put your pickle pipe on top of your jar and then you screw it on to hold it in place with your lid, well, with your ring. <laughs> And the nice thing about these pickle pipes is there's a tiny little hole here that'll allow the CO2 gas that builds up during the fermentation process to be released, yet then it quickly closes and doesn't allow any oxygen in because it's the air that's kind of the enemy of fermentation. So it's a wonderful system. And then you don't have to worry about, as I've shared with you in many of my fermentation videos, you don't have to worry about burping the jar. You can just let your jar ferment and then it'll be ready for you depending on how many days you allow it to ferment without having to worry about every day unscrewing the lid and letting out the gas and then screwing the lid again. So it's good if you find yourself getting a little preoccupied and forgetting to release the gas. Uh, this does the job for you. And the nice thing about this kit is it comes with this lovely little cookbook. It talks all about fermentation, plus it shares a bunch of recipes, including how to make sauerkraut, how to make kind of a spicy sauerkraut, so similar to a kimchi, how to make fermented pickles, how to make fermented carrots, and a whole bunch of other things. So if you're new to fermentation, I can't say enough about this. I've been very pleased with the mason tops. Yes, as I said, there are other ways to make ferments, but this system just works real smoothly. So be sure to check the description underneath where I'll have a link for the discount coupon code. Number three, let's talk about culturing. Whether you're making homemade yogurt, or you're making kefir or kefir, or you're making kombucha, Cultures for Health has the most amazing selection of starter kits and I have a coupon code for you in the description below. Now, do you need a culture to make homemade yogurt? Not at all. You can definitely just get some plain yogurt from your grocery store. Just make sure it has live cultures in it. And yogurt is very easy to make. I have a video where I go into a lot of detail with you and I'll be sure to link to that, but I'll quickly go over the, the process here with you. Now, all you need is two bowls. You don't need a machine. If your bowls have lids like this, that's terrific. But if not, you can definitely use plastic wrap. You just want one bowl that can fit nicely into another bowl. You're gonna put your milk and your culture or your plain yogurt, a little bit of your plain yogurt from the grocery store into your milk. Then you're gonna put your smaller bowl into your larger bowl. Ah, lower that down. And then you're gonna fill this bowl, the larger bowl, all around the smaller bowl with warm water. Then you're gonna go ahead and cover your smaller bowl. Then you're gonna cover your larger bowl, wrap everything up maybe in a dish towel, a couple of dish towels, Keep it nice and warm, put it in a cozy place. I usually put it in my oven that's turned off, but with the electric light on, you might have a pilot light and it'll keep it nice and cozy. And in the morning, you're gonna have homemade yogurt. And you know what's great about that? Now you can use your homemade yogurt to make all your future batches of yogurt. You don't have to buy plain yogurt from the grocery store anymore, and you don't have to buy any kind of cultures anymore, starter kit cultures. You can eat your yogurt plain, or you can add some nice homemade jam into it. I have a lot of videos where I show you how to make homemade jam. And so it's so wonderful because your homemade yogurt is gonna be a lot richer in the probiotics, the good bacteria, than anything you can buy at the store. And if you like to make kefir or kefir, Cultures for Health has, culture, has cultures for that too. You can buy the little grains, they're dehydrated, you rehydrate them, and you can start making your kefir in no time at all. It's wonderfully rich in good probiotics, and it's a nice complement to also having homemade yogurt. This way you get a variety of good bacteria into your diet. And if you like making kombucha, a big jar like this works great. Then you just need some clean cloth that you're going to put over your jar. Once you get your SCOBY in there with your liquid, your rubber band, and you're all set. And I have a very detailed video where I walk you through the entire process of making homemade kombucha. And the good news is Cultures for Health has what you need in terms of getting started to grow your SCOBY. Number four, the kitchen equipment we need for making bone broth. Well, every traditional foods cook needs a big stock pot, and there is a wide variety available to you. I really like the ones made by Le Creuset because they're lined with enamel and they come in a wide variety of sizes. This is a 20 quart, but they go all the ways down, I think to maybe a six quart or a seven quart. So whatever size household you have and whatever amount of bone broth you like making, there's a stock pot for you. 
And when it comes to making bone broth and you need beef bones or chickens and even chicken feet, I have a discount coupon code for you in the description below for U.S. Wellness Meats, where you can buy grass-fed, organic beef, beef bones, chickens, chicken feet, a whole host of things. Now, when it comes to making bone broth, I have a very detailed playlist where I show you how to make all types of bone broth beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, very reasonably priced bone broths using just chicken feet that are gonna create a very gelatinous bone broth. And why do we want it to be gelatinous? Because the gelatin really soothes our digestive system. And I'll be sure to link to that playlist and you can learn how to make beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, pork bone broth, fish bone broth, a whole host of bone broths. And I get this question a lot and I wanna let you know you can mix bones together anytime you want. If you've got a few beef bones and a couple of chicken feet, if you're not comfortable working with chicken feet, I understand completely. You can use chicken necks, chicken backs, reasonably priced pieces of chicken, and you can mix them with some of the more expensive beef bone broths. But with a 15% discount at US Wellness Meats, it makes it a little more affordable. So know that you have a lot of options when it comes to making bone broth. Now, one thing I want to share with you, this is a piece of equipment that I absolutely could not live without. This, and many of you have told me, was a game changer when it came to making bone broth. This is a fat separator, but it's not any old fat separator. It's the most clever fat separator I've ever used. You put your bone broth right in here, and then it has a little thumb depressor and you press this down and you can put this over your jar or whatever uh, in whatever you're decanting your bone broth into and you just watch until the fat because the fat is risen to the top you watch until it gets down to the bottom where the fat is still in the fat separator but all of your bone broth has drained out into your vessel so now you have perfectly clear delightfully defatted bone broth that can be used in any type of recipe but then, yes, I know many of you have said, don't throw the fat out. You know I would never throw the fat out. What you can do then is get a different vessel and then just decant your fat into that. So now if you've made beef bone broth, you've got some wonderful beef fat, it's great for frying. If you've made chicken bone broth and you've got your chicken fat, that's schmaltz, it's wonderful, it's very flavorful and can be used in a lot of different ways and pork fat. I mean, it's just endless variety of fat that you can have whenever you make bone broth. Even if you've mixed beef bones and chicken or pork, whatever the case may be, that fat is definitely worth saving and very usable. But I love this because I like to separate the fat from my beef bone broth or my chicken bone broth, whatever I'm making. I make a lot of beef bone broth, but whatever I'm making. And that way I have a beautiful clear broth that I can use in place of water when making soups and stews, in place of water when I'm cooking grains like rice or other whole grains. It makes it a very versatile liquid. And of course, when bone broth is defatted, it makes a wonderful sipping broth. Now, a few other tools that really help make making bone broth an easy job is to have some kind of spider strainer like this, as well as a flour sack towel. You've heard me talk about these a lot. I love these in place of cheesecloth because these can be rinsed out in your sink and then washed with your other dishcloths. And then having some type of strainer, a mesh strainer or a colander, whatever you have, is nice because what I like to do is line my mesh strainer with my flour sack towel and then strain my bone broth through this. So any little, even I've used my spider strainer, you know, to take out the bones and the vegetables, whatever's in there. Then I like to strain it through this and it just gets that little bit of debris, little bits and bobs that maybe uh, you're not able to get out with your spider strainer. Then from the bowl, then I'll decant it into my fat separator and then I have the perfect, beautiful, clear bone broth that I'll just go ahead and decant down into my jar or whatever vessel I'm saving it in. So all of these tools come in very handy. Can you use cheesecloth? Of course, if you have a very busy household and you just wanna use cheesecloth, which is disposable, I understand that completely. But if you're like me and you like things that you can reuse again and again and again, some of these are 20 years old, so they definitely hold up beautifully. 
And many of you have asked me, how do I wash these? Well, I used to wash these with just some very mild, unscented detergent in my washing machine and uh, with my other white dishcloths, and I would use some bleach. And I have to say, you all gave me the best advice ever. Said instead of bleach, because that can wear them out and cause them to get little holes and whatnot, use vinegar. Now remember, never mix bleach and vinegar together. That's a disaster. But a little scented, unscented detergent and some vinegar is going to get these beautifully cleaned. Now I just want to take a minute to share with you what I like to do when it comes to warming bone broth that I enjoy using as a sipping broth. I found this pot and I absolutely love this. This is actually called a fourth burner pot. If you have a stove that has that small burner and you're always wondering what's the best pot to put on that, they have made these what they call fourth burner pots. And they're so clever because now I'm going to use this for bone broth. However, it also comes with this little uh, like a strainer of sorts that you can put asparagus in, you could put maybe three corn, uh, corn on the cobs in. So there's different things that you can do with this and make use, make very good use of that fourth small burner on your stove. But I really love this because it can be used in so many ways because it has all the markings inside, one cup, two cup, three cups, so on and so forth. So I can fill this with, with as much bone broth I think I'm going to need and then I can just put my lid on and then put this on the stove and warm it and enjoy it as a sipping broth. And this lid locks in place so it's easy to, to just, as you can see, it's locked in place. It's easy to pour and it's got these little uh, holes here that let you pour it very easily and then you just can put your lid back on and lock it in place. Go ahead and put this in your refrigerator with any leftover bone broth you have, it, have in here and then bring it back out onto your, onto your stove and warm up your bone broth again. Now, if you don't have this particular little pot, which I think is very clever, but if you don't have this, but you have a, a teapot that's a glass teapot or an enamel teapot that's made to go on the stove, my friend Michelle over at Chocolate Box Cottage keeps her bone broth in that fashion. And then she just puts her bone broth in there, she's got it in the fridge, and when she needs it, she just transfers it to her stove and warms it up just like that. So you've got some options as to how you want to warm your bone broth. But this really solves the problem of what many of you have shared with me. Oh, I have this big jar. What do I do now? Do I, you know, because it's very gelatinous and whatnot. Just storing it in here in your fridge, if you're going to use it within the week, it's perfect. Now I'm focused on the stock pot. However, can you make bone broth in a slow cooker or some sort of multi-pot like an instant pot? Definitely. And I have lots of videos where I show you how to do that. Number five. Let's talk about home canning. If you're new to home canning, I think the best and maybe the easiest place to get started is with water bath canning. Now what I've got here are two types of water bath canners that are made for the stovetop. Now are there electric water bath canners? Yes, definitely. And I have one. But the reason I'm not sharing it with you and recommending it is because I've had a little trouble with the lid and I want to share that information with you. I think an electric water bath canner can be great. The only problem I ran into with the specific one I had was that the lid is glass and it got a crack in it. But the manufacturer was fantastic and they did send me a replacement lid. So that was a nice thing to have. But I just wonder if going forward, if I might get another crack. And so that kind of worries me a little. So I really do prefer to make sure that I have stovetop water bath canners on hand. Now, what's the difference between the two of these? Because clearly they look very different. This is an enameled water bath canner and it comes with a rack inside that you would put your canning jars in once they were filled and then you would lower them down into the hot water and then put it this on your stove top, bring it up to a boil and boil them for whatever uh, time is recommended uh, in your canning recipe. This type of water bath canner is best for a gas stove or that has the burners, the, the um, cast iron type burners, 
or a coiled electric stove. And the reason is, is the bottom of these type of canners is often not completely flat. Sometimes there's just a little mild indentation like this, and sometimes they're actually quite concave. In most cases, the manufacturers of those flat glass top type stoves don't recommend using this type of water bath canner on them because it can create some type of suction and potentially crack the glass top stove. In that case, you're best off with a canner like this, a water bath canner that has a completely flat bottom. This works beautifully, and that's the type of stove I have, uh, is a glass top stove. And I've used this on it, and it works great. This also comes with a rack, and you put your jars in the same way you would with the enameled uh, water bath canner. Now, in addition to your water bath canners, you're going to want to have some basic supplies on hand, obviously, like canning jars. A bowl makes wonderful canning jars. This is a WEC canning jar. This is kind of a European style with the little clamps. It's kind of fun to uh, home can with those. Uh, but you have a lot of options. And then you want to have your lids uh, and your rings, or some people call them bands, uh, if you have the ball type canning jars. And so that's what you want to make sure that you have on hand in different sizes before you start water bath canning. You'll also have things like a debubbler and different little tools that are going to help you with the process. But the one that I want to focus on here that I just think is wonderful is this spring-loaded jar lifter. Now, are there jar lifters that don't have the spring loading? Yes, and can you use that? Definitely. But these are just terrific because they give such a secure hold to your jar and then a very uh, secure release. Now, if you buy a kit of home canning supplies, sometimes, as I mentioned, they will come with your water bath canners, like including the debubbler and a little magnetized jar lifter, things like that, something for measuring headspace. Sometimes your debubbler will have the little ruler on it for measuring headspace. And those usually come in a kit. And in that kit, they will have a jar lifter, but it's not going to be one of these spring loading type. These are often sold separately. But if you do get one of those kits, and as I said, they're very affordable, uh, you may want to go ahead and add in getting a separate jar lifter, because I, I can't say enough good things about this, because this has really saved the day. Uh, many times, the traditional jar lifter, it can be easy to not 100% get the right grip, at least in my case. But this makes always uh, makes me feel very secure. So I highly recommend this. And this would be, as we go into the holidays, this is a terrific uh, stocking stuffer for anyone who is a home canner. This is one thing that I wanted to share with you. If you like home canning, maybe like making jams and homemade jams and jellies and then canning them up and giving them as gifts, I think these little wax papers are so adorable. They can be used for a lot of things like wrapping food and maybe wrapping homemade candies, but you can cut these and use these as the decorative paper on top of a canning jar and just tie it with a string. And I love these because they look, this particular one looks like little wild strawberries with little leaves attached. And I thought, how perfect is this paper for using for a uh, homemade strawberry jam and making your jars look very pretty and perfect for gift giving. So I'll be sure to put a link to this in the description below. Number six, storage. How do we keep our foods and our homemade meals as fresh as possible? Well, I know you've shared with me that you're concerned about plastic. And were there options for storing food in glass that would really keep the food fresh? And I'm happy to share with you that there is. Now, many of us love our food saver, and we've been using that for years, but it does require storing foods in plastic bags and plastic containers. Now, they are BPA-free, so that's good. But for those of you who really prefer storing your food in glass, I wanted to share this option with you that's called the Zwilling. This basically operates on a very similar process that we know from using the little handheld food saver. It's basically the same thing, but the only difference is you're going to be using glass containers. 
Now I'm going to do a follow-up video where I talk about the pros and cons between Food Saver and between Zwilling, but I think if you like storing things in glass, you're going to love this system and you're going to love these. And Zwilling really offers you the best of both worlds because they also do have the plastic bags that you can seal food in as well if you're comfortable doing that. And these plastic bags come in a variety of sizes. And when it comes to these glass containers, they come in a variety of sizes too. I've just got two here to share with you, but there are some that are smaller and some that are larger, and even some that look basically like a casserole dish. So there's a lot of options for how you can store your food and keep it fresh. And the good news is they guarantee that whatever you put in here and use their little device to seal this up tight and get it airtight, so to speak, that it should stay fresh five times longer than if you weren't pour, putting it in a container like this. Well, in addition to number seven that we're going to talk about now, I do have a bonus item for you that no traditional foods cook should be without. But before we get into the bonus item, let's talk about number seven, clean up. Every home cook at some point has to clean up. If not ourselves, somebody else in the family. And the easier we can make the job, all the better. Well, I know we're all really concerned about using too many paper products and chemicals and so on and so forth in our homes. So what I wanted to share with you was some really earth-friendly products. I have to share with you about these Swedish dishcloths. I love these things. They're very reasonably priced and they can literally replace paper towels. I do keep some paper towels on hand, but I try to use them very little. Instead, I use these. And what is so fantastic is that these can absorb so much liquid, just a little thing like this. It, it, it's going to expand and absorb lots of liquid and be an amazing cleanup uh, powerhouse or workhorse in your kitchen. Now, I especially like the ones from this company. And as I said, all of, none of this is sponsored. All of these are things that I buy, products that I love. And this is the Super Scandi, which is cute, Super Scandi uh, company. And this is just a family-owned business. I think things like this, they just make wonderful presents. These would make great stocking stuffers. And they come with a note, which I think is very sweet. And it says, thank you so much for supporting our small family business, Warmest Jenna. So I think that's, that just makes everything very nice. But what's great is these simply come like this with this little cardboard uh, holder, just like this, nothing fancy. And what's great is the packaging, this piece is completely recyclable. And these are compostable. So it's just the best of all worlds. Now, I like to just have these in this off-white color, but they come in a whole host of colors. I mean, everything that you could imagine. Plus, there are a lot of variety when it comes to using these Swedish-type dishcloths. And you can get ones that go with the season, which, of course, is very cute. But what can be really nice is you can get ones with pictures on them that can help you designate them as to how they're going to be used in your home. As you know, I have a dog. I love our Indy. He's just such a gem, but he can be a little bit of a messy guy. And having something like this that has dogs on it that I can use to clean up messes. You know, he splatters water everywhere when he drinks. He's a typical boy. But these are great. And then I know, OK, these are for the dog and these are going to be kept in a separate area. So if you've really been trying to work on cutting down on buying paper products, specifically paper towels, you can't go wrong with these Swedish dishcloths. As I said, they're very affordable and they last for such a long time. You can reuse and reuse and reuse and reuse and they stay sanitary. And when you feel that maybe they're on their last leg, just throw them in your compost. And I actually have to say again that I said that the cardboard was recyclable. This is compostable too. It's also, it's made from cornstarch. It's amazing. The other thing I want to share with you is about these soaps. They're very unique. They're not actually soap that you're, I guess you could wash your hands with them, but they're not actually soaps in the traditional way when we think about a bar of soap. 
These are actually made for washing your dishes and they last a really long time and you don't you no longer will need liquid uh, dishwashing liquid. <laughs> you can recycle the box. You don't have to worry about any plastic. And then you put this bar of soap on this little, what do you call it, soap dish that it comes with. But how clever is this soap dish? You put this on the edge of your sink and it, see it's sealed on this side, but it's open on this side. And so you put your soap here. It keeps your little bar of soap dry and, the, and it drains off into the sink. So you, it's not as though it's going to make your, the counter area around your sink wet. Then when you go to wash your dishes, all you do is take your dish brush or your dish rag or your sponge, whatever you use, just soap up and go ahead and clean up. And that's it. They also provide you with a little all natural scrubbing brush and this thing works terrific. You just soap up and use this. It's not very harsh at all, but it's really great at loosening anything that may be sticking to your frying pan or your baking dish, whatever the case may be. And the dish soaps that they offer come in three different fragrances. The one I've got here is lemon. They also have grapefruit and they have pine. So this is a wonderful option to consider if you want to just get away from any of the liquid dishwashing liquids uh, that come in plastic containers. Next, I want to share with you about my favorite microfiber cloths. These ones are really unique. I saved the packaging so that I could share this with you because I just think this is so terrific. It says that they remove bacteria from surfaces with just water. So you really could do away with a lot of cleaning products. And what they explain is that, first of all, it's called the Renew brand. These are all made from a recycled, 100% recycled materials, specifically plastic. So they're recycling plastic. And what they explain on the box is that the fibers are woven so close together that the bacteria basically has nowhere to hide. I think it's kind of cute. It says the Renew Collection brings you the magic of microfiber without making a mess of planet Earth. Made from GRS certified recycled plastic, each cloth is designed to tackle a different household task. And they've got handy loops and labels. I'll show you in a minute for easy storage and even easier use for magical, chemical-free cleaning. Well, how can you go wrong with that? And here's the loop that I'm talking about. So wherever you use this to clean, you can hang this up on a little hook and let it air dry and it's ready for its job next time. And also on the loop is printed what this cloth is made to be used for. And this one is specifically an all purpose. So this is great. You can use this to wipe down your counters. You can use this to clean glass. You use this to clean your uh, shower doors, mirrors, whatever the case may be. This is an all purpose one. And as you'll see, all three of mine are all purpose. I really like the all purpose because as the name implies, I can really just use them anywhere I need to. Uh, there are others sometimes that are specifically made uh, for say like washing windows and taking care of things like that. But really I have found that the all purpose ones work great on whatever surface you want to use them on as long as it's a solid surface. They do share on the back that these are specifically for hard, non-porous surfaces like glass, ceramic, metal. You can use them to clean your stainless steel pots. They're wonderful. Varnished wood and plastic. And the bonus item, a cast iron skillet. Every self-respected modern pioneer in the kitchen needs one. And it doesn't matter if you got it at a garage sale and you season it yourself like this old one, or you buy one pre-seasoned to make sure you've got a good cast iron skillet in your kitchen. Now, if you'd like more information on how to equip the traditional foods kitchen, be sure to click on this video over here where I go over a whole host of tools and equipment that'll make life easier when it comes to making sourdough, culture and dairy, making ferments, and a whole host of other things. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.